here's an example of graphing one of the other four trig functions. My, y equals minus 4 cotangent 5 pi theta. And the first thing to deal with is let's get the period. And remember that for cotangent and tan, it's different. It's pi over b. It's over whatever you see here. So if pi over 5 pi is 1 fifth. Okay. So that's good to know. That's the period of the thing. Okay. And that allows us to start marking out our horizontal scale. We don't. I, well, I'm not going to ask you shifts on these guys. That does make it more more complicated. But um, we can start marking out our scale. The other thing to know is that cotangent starts at the axis with an asymptote, and then so the next asymptote is going to be one whole period away. And I'll just put that. Let's say one fifth here, and then go out to two fifths in case I want another period. And I can start out by drawing the asymptotes. You should you should do that first. They're easy to draw and they're guidelines. Why why draw curves before straight lines when you can do it the other way around? And let's go ahead and go out to here. You don't. I'm not going to make you do more than two periods, but let's just you have room for three periods. Okay. So there's the the period and the x-axis information. The quarter period, always important, is um, one twentieth. Okay. So let's mark those guys. So 1 20th, 1 10th, and 3 20ths. Okay, so what's going to happen? It's a cotangent, so the, the usual cotangent starts high, comes through the uh, x-axis, and goes out low. This is crucial, though. Okay, that's going to mean it's upside down. Okay. And so it's actually going to start low, come through the origin, and end high. So any way you slice it, it goes through, right halfway between the asymptotes, it goes through the origin. That's true of all of tangent and cotangent. It goes through the x-axis, rather, not the origin. So what, what are the, these quarter period points for? That's how we deal with this vertical scale. This is the thing that sets the vertical scale. And what we know is that on those quarter period points, halfway between when it's zero and when it goes off to minus infinity, that's when cotangent achieves the value one. So four cotangent is going to be four or minus four, and then minus is going to flip it upside down. So all we do is we set a nice scale, let's say here and here, and we know that when it's one twentieth, it's going to be this guy. When it's three twentieth, it's going to be this guy. Let's check that real quick. If I put in like theta equals uh, 1 20th, let's just see if we can check it, let's see if we can squeeze it in down here. Uh, minus 4 cotangent 5 pi times 1 20th. We don't want to get too far away from the root of this, which is simply plugging in values into functions. Okay, so that's minus 4 cotangent of pi over 4 when we simplify that. Aha! Pi over 4 on the unit circle, that's the 45 degree position. That's where tangent and cotangent are both 1. And so minus 4 cotangent pi over 4. Oh, and I see this tells me I forgot the upside down thing. Because what am I going to get? I'm going to get minus 4. That was a good thing to check. I said about how it's upside down, and then I just forgot. It starts low, gets a little less steep, and then goes up high. And I know it's hard to make it look like a nice curve, but even for, for me, it's a little hard to do that. Okay, so then mark a couple more quarter period points. This guy's going to do the same. Starts low, minus 4, ends high. Connect the dots, roughly. And then four more three more quarter period points. Plotting, I'm still plotting them carefully. Okay. And I put explicit labels on these guys. It'd be good to label these guys too, but I, I don't know if I'd take off points. As long as I can see that you're carefully plotting the quarter periods, that you've got a scale so I can figure out what these numbers are if necessary, and that they really are linked up. So it's not just that you plot them in a random place, it's that you plot them on the right height that is matching the vertical scale. Okay, So that's minus cotangent. Notice it kind of starts to look like tangent a little bit because it's going uphill. That's okay because it's negative. But what distinguishes it from tangent is that the asymptote is on the axis. The asymptote for um, for tangent are symmetrically around the axis, and it goes actually goes to the origin. But this is co minus cotangent.